Hello, my name is Caden Jones and this is Natalie and she's going to be the victim in this scenario. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely use gloves and how to control bleeding. The first thing to do is approach the victim, introduce yourself and let them know you are first aid certified and ask them if they need any help. So that would go something like this. Hi, my name is Caden and I am first aid certified. Do you need help? Yes, I have a cut on my arm. Okay, can you show me where that cut is? Right here. Once you have introduced yourself, you're going to put gloves on to help prevent blood from getting on you and to help prevent the spread of contamination for both the wound and yourself. Once you get your gloves on, first you need to expose the wound by removing or cutting the person's claw to find the source of bleeding and then you can expect the wound. In this case, it is just a clean cut so all that is needed to be done is to clean the cut and bandage it. Make sure you tell the victim what you are doing before you start. Your cut is clean so all we need to do is clean it and bandage it. To clean the cut, put a sterile gauze pad or a clean cloth on the cut and since this is a small cut, I'm going to apply direct pressure on the cut with my fingers. If it was a large wound, I'd use the palm on my hand to apply pressure instead of my fingers. You will hold steady, firm, and uninterrupted pressure on the wound for at least five minutes. The gauze or cloth allows you to apply even pressure and direct pressure stops most bleeding. Applying direct pressure to the wound compresses the sides of the torn vessel and helps the body's natural clotting mechanisms to work. Be sure the pressure remains constant, is not too light, and is applied to the bleeding source. If the bleeding does not stop within 10 minutes, add more dressings on the first one and press harder over a wider area. Make sure not to remove blood-soaked dressings and apply new dressings over the old ones so that, that you do not dislodge any clot that has already been formed. Once the bleeding has stopped, you need to use a pressure bandage to hold the dressing over the wound. For this scenario, we are going to be using a spiral method of bandaging a forearm with a roller bandage. To do this, start at the narrow part of the arm and wrap upward to the wider part to make the bandage more secure. Start below the edge of the dressing and make two straight anchoring turns with the bandage. Make a series of crisscross or figure eight turns progressing up the arm. Each turn should overlap the previous wrap. When you finish wrapping the arm with two straight turns and secure the bandage. Secure the bandage. To ensure that the bandage is not too tight, ask the victim to move their hand and arm around. Once this is done, the victim has been taken care of unless the bleeding continues. If the bleeding continues, call 911 if it has not already been done. Once you are finished taking care of the victim, you proper need to remove your gloves properly. To, prop to properly remove your gloves, start by pinching one glove at the outside near the wrist and gently pull the glove off while keeping the inside out.
When the first glove is removed, hold it in your gloved hand. To remove the second glove, slide two fingers of your bare hand inside the remaining glove at the wrist and gently stretch the glove away from the hand to pull the glove off. Next, you need to dispose of your gloves in a biohazard container on a sealed plastic bag. When you are done with that, make sure to wash your hands with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. In this case, we're going to use hand sanitizer. <coughs> After you properly dispose your gloves and wash your hands, you are done.